Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette and welcome to Good Owl Games, the place where I love to give you two player insights into some of the board games you might just want to have in your own collection someday. So Imperium Classics is a game that's given me a lot to think about and if you'd like to know why, here's five things I think you need to know about it. Have you ever wondered what it might be like to lead an ancient civilization to greatness? Well, here's your chance. You can choose your unique civilization, each with their own personal deck. Play cards from your deck to advance and build your tableau. Become civilized to develop further but watch out for unrest amidst these changes. You can obtain glory and fame. And then we'll see whose civilization is the greatest. Thing one, what's this game all about? Imperium Classics is a game in which you play as a developing ancient civilization on its path to greatness. And there's a whole host of them to choose from, from people like the Celts, the Vikings, the Persians. There's eight in total and there's something here for everybody. And each of their decks is unique and pertains to their own history and story. Well, at least for the most part. Um, and I quite like that aspect of the game where you don't really need to know about much about history to understand or appreciate what's going on. Um, but I do feel like you'll learn a little something while you play without it necessarily being rammed down your throat. There are also additional cards you're going to be able to add to your civilization deck and if you're so inclined I'm pretty sure you could come up with thematic reasons for the way in which your civilization is expanding so there's a touch of that there too. Um, my only problem with the theme really is some of the terminology used here. Your nation starts out as a barbarian and then works its way to becoming more civilized so it can develop further. Um, and I'm just not a fan of some of the terms used here. Now this is mentioned in the rule book as these terms aren't appropriate really um, for, you know, actual study, um, but they're perfectly fine to use in an abstracted game like this. But I think this game has so much of an emphasis on the, the really cool and interesting theme that I just think it's a little bit of a cop out like that to resort to that kind of terminology. Um, but you know, that's something you'll have to decide for yourself. Overall though, the theme and the mechanics marry incredibly well and you do really feel like you're in charge of a, a growing civilization. Now, similar games to this one. Theme-wise, I don't think you're going to come across anything else that covers kind of the scope and breadth of the history and the civilizations covered here. I think this really stands out on its own in that aspect. Um, Mechanics-wise though, if you've ever played a game where you start with a preset deck of cards and you purchase cards to put in your deck and then at the end of the game you tally up the score of the cards in your deck, you'll have played something similar to this. But to be fair, Imperium Classics does throw its own bit into the mix as well. Thing two, what kind of actions are you going to be performing on your turn? Um, firstly, let me tell you, there are a lot of actions. There are a lot of different ways to end the game and to win the game. And I'm not going to be able to cover all of this in this little segment, but I will do my best to give you a feel for what it's like to play this. Um, so Imperium Classics is a game that's really all about that civilization deck. Sure, it's a tableau builder because you're going to want to put cards into play. Um, and it's definitely hand management too, because Basically, the deck um, that you are playing is everything you need to fuel everything else you want to do. So if you want to buy cards at your deck, well, you'll need the card from your deck for that. If you want to get resources so you can pay for things, well, you, that has to come from your deck too. So you can see why it's incredibly important. And there are a number of ways to manipulate your deck, including allowing you to discard your hand at the end of turn so you can draw more cards. And drawing cards is really important in this for a number of reasons. So you start with your own civilization who will have their own power cards in play um, which gives you your own kind of special ability and unique way of scoring at the end of the game you'll have your deck full of cards and your hand 
The fun part is, is that when you draw through all the cards in your deck and you go to draw another, you get to add in a card from your nation's deck. Um, and these are kind of not quite upgrades, but a, a way that your civilization is, you know, progressing. Um, and so you get to add this in. So you're going to want to go through your deck as quickly as possible to add in these cool new cards. Um, the problem, of course, being that, well, the more cards you add into your deck, the longer it takes for you to go through your deck, right? And so you're trying to battle against this bloat. Um, the ways to do this are, well, there are region cards that you can put into play that allow you to tuck cards underneath them. So that helps you, you know, thin out your deck. And there are also a num number of ways to draw and discard cards as well to help you motor your way through it all. Now, what happens when you run out of cards in your nation's deck? Well, this is where it gets interesting because for most civilizations, this means you become civilized and then you're allowed to draw cards from the development deck instead. Um, and these are all sorts of cool things as well. Um, and the game will end once someone draws the last card of their development deck, or at least it's one of the ways the game will end. So it essentially kind of comes down to a, a deck race. But, you know, the real question here is, well, how do you win? How are you getting victory points? Um, and these all come from the cards themselves. And you're going to need to buy additional cards outside of your nation deck from the market to give you victory points. So yet again, more kind of additional things go into your deck that you're going to have to contend with and tuck away so that you can continue kind of filtering through your deck. Um, there's a whole host of other mechanics going on here. I haven't touched yet like unrest cards so that, you know, as your civilization progresses and you buy cards from the market, you get this negative card into your deck. But there are ways to kind of deal with that. But it represents the change that's happening. Um, there is also a way to end the game with these unrest cards too, where you don't actually tally up your victory points rather you see who has the least unrest which is kind of a, a scary concept there are also fame cards you can get from your faction which are these super duper uber cool cards but usually involve you having to sacrifice a lot of what you have in play to get them and then of course some factions or nations will just end the game kind of differently as well because you know there's always an exception here Imperium Classics offers us a really interesting efficiency puzzle where you're trying to figure out just how much stuff you can put in your deck without entirely overburdening it. Um, and mechanically, it's a really sound idea. However, I'm not sure how well it translates into smooth gameplay. Thing three on the table. So this one is kind of bold, bright and colourful and I think it looks really nice when it's all laid out in front of you, seeing all your own unique art for your civilization. Yeah, it's, it's a looker. Um, it doesn't take up a ton of space. Um, however, your tableau is kind of ever growing, so you kind of want to prepare yourself for that. Um, and the setup and teardown of this isn't too much, but there is a little bit extra because you do need to construct a deck out of a mix of cards from other decks, and then you'll have to deconstruct that at the end of the game. So there's a little bit there to tack on. Um, for two of us, it takes about 90 minutes to play. Um, and yeah, there is a good bit of downtime between the turns too. The rulebook is its own special brand of rulebook, one in which after reading, um, I still wasn't sure how to play the game. Give me a set of rules, but not really how to play. Um, certain important rules were hidden somewhere in the appendix. And I really wish there had been better descriptions of a lot of the keywords and terms used in the game as well. Um, the good news, however, is, is that there's tons of replayability here. There are eight different nations you can play with. There is, in fact, more if you want to get the Imperium Legends box that kind of combines with this one. Um, I know I do. And each civilization has a lot of depth to it. And there's a lot of play to be had here. And you're going to want to play with all of them. This is the kind of game you can delve into, but not really come up for air. Thing four, how does this game look and feel? I think a major part of this game's appeal is the art and you might well recognize it from games such as Raiders of the North Sea or Architects of the West Kingdom um, because we're a very famous artist put his name below um, because it's safer than me pronouncing it um, and wow um, let me impress upon you just how much art is in the game because each civilization has their own special deck with its own art. Um, so that's eight of those. There's a whole series of market cards all with unique art as well. Like there is so much gorgeous art to enjoy in this game. And it's nice to see, you know, women and people of color included. Um, now, the components here are really what let this game down. It feels cheap. 
Um, and so you get things like little wooden, like little cardboard shit tokens for your resources and for your victory points. Um, the card quality itself isn't particularly great. And for a whole half a minute, I got really excited when I saw there's an insert inside the box for all of the decks. But you know what? The name for what deck is supposed to go in what slot is written in the bottom of the slot. So you can't tell what deck is which from just looking at the box. I was like, what a waste. Who approved this? Um, so yeah, that was a, a waste as well. Um, so what really carries this game here in terms of aesthetics is absolutely the art. And it's almost, almost enough for you to ignore those terrible components. Thing five, is this game actually any good? I have a hard time deciding about Imperium Classics. Um, and I think this is because it, this is a game that I should love on all the levels. Um, I love the theme. I love the fact you had your own civilization with its own unique deck. I love that this game really is about, you know, drawing a lot of cards, discarding a lot of cards, improving your deck, you know, pinning it out. All these kinds of things that I really enjoy about card games. It, all of it is here. And it is an immense amount of fun to play your deck. It is a well-oiled machine and I love using it to kind of to see where it was trying to go because someone better than you built this deck and you just get to come along for the ride. And I think that makes your turn super, super exciting because you're playing all of the best cards. Um, I really love as well the way your civilization develops via cards. I think this is really genius. The notion that, you know, as you go through kind of the, the older motions of what your civilization's up to and when you run out of those, you have learned something new that you're adding in um, and that you're expanding your horizons with. And then, of course, eventually you become civilized in, in most cases um, and get access to different kinds of cards that way. And you really get to see your entire civilization change throughout your deck. And I think it's so, so good. Um, it's one of the few really good examples of theme meets mechanics that I've seen in a while. I think it's done very well. Um, now, the problem I have, I suppose, with this game, or one of the many, is how long it takes to play. Um, 90 minutes. And not only is it 90 minutes, but there isn't fast paced turns either. There is a very big gap between when I play and when my opponent plays. And I've only been playing this two player. I can't imagine it with three or four players. I don't think I would actually play it. And especially as the game advances and you get more actions or you get things like free actions and all that kind of stuff, um, turns can take a very long time. Um, and it definitely feels like it. Um, the other thing I'd like to point out is that it's very hard to tell how well you're doing while playing this game. There's no scoreboard or anything like that. You're just putting cards into your deck. And while you might know roughly what's in there, many of the cards victory points will depend on certain things that won't become apparent till the end of the game. So, you know, how many cards you have with this symbol? Well, we don't know yet um, and things like that. And it makes it very hard to keep track of your opponent's turn too, which is why I think it feels like there's such downtime between the turns because you don't really care what your opponent is doing because mostly you can't follow it. But also there's very little interaction here. So you can't prevent your opponent from doing anything either. So yeah, you don't have to be watching for what they might come out with next because even if you can see it coming, you can't really do a lot about it. So this is definitely a solitaire feeling game. There are bits of interactions, but they feel more like annoyances, I think, than anything else. Um, the final part, I suppose, that I think, uh, I spent ages trying to figure out why this didn't feel more fun. And I think really what it comes down to is this, is that your initial deck that you start with is so, so, so good. And it is the fun bit of interacting with that deck because it knows what it's doing. But when you go to purchase cards to get victory points and put them in your deck, it bogs your deck down. But not only that, the cards you're picking up are nowhere near as good as the cards you already have. And so basically you're buying cards simply to tuck them under cards to keep your deck thin and help you kind of get your way towards victory. Very few of the cards we encountered that come up in the market for purchase seem to help the strategy that the deck itself initially had. So all of these just feel like bloat. And in fact, it felt like I didn't want to add victory points to my deck. But of course, that's kind of the point of the game, isn't it? And I think that takes a lot of the fun out of it. 
Like this is really obvious in the breakthrough mechanic, which allows you instead of buying a card from the market, you can just go straight to the deck until you find the first card that has whatever color or symbol you're looking for. And that really just highlights to me how little those cards from the market and what they do really matter. All you care about is the symbols or the colors or what they come from. And I think that's the, the downer with this game for me is that your deck is awesome, but having it interact with the rest of the game is not as fun. And that may be the puzzle you kind of enjoy, um, that you like dealing with kind of, I suppose, imperfections in your perfectness as it goes. But for me, it always left me feeling a little bereft and a little unsatisfied when we totted up the score points because I so little kind of choice in what kind of things I was scoring. It was just I'm grabbing these cards of the right colors so I can tuck them under the things and there's my points. None of them added into the story or the, the history of what my deck was trying to do. Um, so yeah, so that is my thoughts on Imperium Classics. I must say, I think this is a very, very good game. Um, this is my most played review copy of all time. <laughs> I've played this game 11 times now and I'm still wrapping my head around it because even though I'm not necessarily satisfied when I finished playing. This is a game I would play again right now. I would love to get the Legends cards to go with it. Um, there's, It's very addictive and I think there's got to be something special about it that keeps me coming back to it. And maybe that's the mark of a great game um, and I feel it's very very close to that. Do I think you should have Imperium Classics in your collection? Well I feel like if you want a meaty good looking card game with some really cool mechanics then you should absolutely be looking at this one. You've been watching Good Owl Games. Why not like or subscribe to the channel so you can get updates about my future videos or if you've got any comments or queries you'd like to make about Imperium Classics why not shout them off in the comment box below I'd love to hear from you. So tune in again next time for some more well I don't know about short but definitely informative board game reviews.